Hey everybody, shalom, shalom. It's Jen from Ezekiel Effect Ministries. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. It's been just gorgeous uh, up here in the Midwest. We're having a wonderful spring. The flowers are out, the trees are out, it's warm. So um, God is extra good in my book today and this week because <laughs> I like the warm weather. So today I wanted to read to you Psalm 17. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version here. And it says, Prayer with confidence in final salvation. A prayer of David. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You had visited me in the night. You have tried me and found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. So David is clearly saying that he has confidence that he's been really trying to walk in step with the Lord. He's been trying to live righteously through the Lord's eyes. And he's saying in the Passion Translation in verse 1, I've done what's right and my lips speak truth. Examine and exonerate me. Vindicate me and show the world I'm innocent. So he's really trying to show the Lord and, and plead with the Lord to say I'm, he, he's trying to be really transparent, which is a good sign. You know, if we don't have anything to hide, we can be transparent with um, not only God, but anybody, but especially with God is who we want to be transparent with. All right, so verse 5, it says, Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. So he's still also saying, I need you, Lord. Even though I've been making good choices and walking in step with you, I still need you. So that's a good sign, right, that we want to make sure that we are humble and we tell the Lord that we need him and we need his strength and it's not by our strength that these things are happening but that the Lord is really the one he's really helping us and in the passion translation it says following your word has kept me from wrong your ways have molded my footsteps so it's not his ways it's literally the Lord his Lord the Lord's ways have molded his footsteps, keeping me from going down the paths of the violent. My steps follow in the tracks of your chariot wheels. Wow, always staying in their path, never straying from your way. That I love that metaphor. You know, we, we think about a chariot, that's what they drove around in back in biblical times. And those deep ruts that must have been in the ground because of the heavy weight of the chariot and the horses and everything it was carrying. And so when we read the Bible, when we follow God's word, when we listen to the Holy Spirit, that's the best way to follow in his tracks of his chariot wheels, is just knowing what God's truth is and that tells us the right way to go. So then it says, you will answer me, God. I know you always will. Hear my words like you always do as you listen to my every prayer that that is so awesome i just i love that god always hears what we have to say and he listens to all of our prayers he may not answer us right at that moment but he always hears us so we can know and trust that the lord is always going to listen to us In the New King James, it says, I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. So, verse 7 then says, Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand, O you who save those who trust in you. So, the Lord is showing his love, his marvelous loving kindness by his right hand. And he does save those who trust in him. So David is just affirming that. He says, from those who rise up against them. So he's, he's saying that the Lord trusts 
He can trust in the Lord that the Lord's going to save him from anybody who might try to rise up against him. And, and we just, we you know, remember David had a lot of enemies, obviously. He was a king. And so he probably needed to pray this prayer every day, you know, that the Lord would rise up and um, avenge him of his enemies and come against anybody who is coming against David. Okay, so that was, that was verse 7. And in the Passion tra Translation, it says, Hide me, magnify the marvels of your mercy. I love the alliteration. Magnify the marvels of your mercy. I'm just going to say that all day long. Magnify the marvels of your mercy. All right. To all who seek you. <laughs> you are the loving Savior of all who turn aside to hide themselves in you. So just trying to get like a, a word picture here, like the image of God as our loving Savior we can hide ourselves in him. I think about just, you know, he's an eagle. He's got those big wings. You know, it, the metaphor that the Bible talks about how God is these different images. But we can just burrow ourselves in, in his arms and he will hide us. You know, he's, he's the hiding place. He's like a cave, a rock that we can hide in. He's so many different metaphors. Verse 8, it says, protect me from harm. Keep an eye on me as you would a child. And we are God's children, right? So he's always got his eye on us. He's like, I'm watching you, right? And it says, keep an eye on me as you would a child who is reflected in the twinkling of your eye. So God's seeing us as the apple of his eye. He's always got a twinkle in his eye. He delights in us. He loves us. And so he's always watching out for us. That's what David is reflecting here. He says, yes. Hide me within the shelter of your embrace, under your outstretched wings. So there's that metaphor again of the wings. Protect me there from all my foes, for there are many who surround my soul to, to completely destroy me. For there are many who surround my soul to completely destroy me. So he's very aware that there are lots of people who would love to kill him and destroy him. And yet... And yet, the Lord is hiding him under his wings, within the shelter of his embrace. So we can take great comfort knowing that that's how God feels about us. He loves us. He has a twinkling in his eye. He delights in us. We're the apple of his eye. And he wants to hide us and protect us. And he is always doing that, right? He's always, you know, he's always saying, come to me, come closer to me. So why do we delay, right? Why not just run into our father's arms with everything? This just, it's making my heart just skip a beat. I mean, I'm just having so much joy right now reading this and talking to you about this because it's just so exciting. It's like the Lord just, he wants to grab us and, you know, swing us around and hide us and snatch us up from all those who might try to hurt us. So then it goes on to say in verse 10, they are pitiless, they're heartless, they're hard as nails, swollen with pride, and filled with arrogance. Sorry, that's my arm moving on the table here. They're pitiless, heartless, hard as nails, swollen with pride, and filled with arrogance. See how they close in on me, waiting for the chance to throw me to the ground. So he's, again, vacillating back to now his enemies and how... I mean, I don't know if he has fear in this moment or not. It doesn't say, but it does say that he's aware that they're very, you know, they're very built up with pride, arrogance. They're, they're trying to close in on him. He's just aware of how close the enemy is. And yet he just got done saying he's being held and sheltered and protected under God's wing. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the New King James. It says... Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat hearts. Well, that's pretty interesting. With their mouths, they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth as a lion is eager to tear his prey 
and like a young lion lurking in secret places. So now he equates, this is the New King James, he equates the enemy to being like this lion who's lurking and just wants to tear him to shreds. And he just, you know, is giving this very vivid description. And isn't that how the enemy likes to come at us? He's crouching, he's hiding, he's got, you know, pride and evil, and um, he just, he really wants to destroy us. If we only knew how much the devil hates us, he hates the Christ in us. That's what it is. He hates us because he hates the Christ in us. If you don't have Jesus living in you, um, if you haven't invited Jesus into your life, the devil doesn't have any reason to hate you because you're living in the world. So that's a problem from from a you know um, uh, a godly standpoint. It's a problem if the devil doesn't hate you. It's a, it's a good thing if the devil hates you. Although it may feel like it's a problem, but that's why we fight against spiritual forces and principle. You know, we fight against those things in the spiritual realm. And that's why we use the Word of God, which is why we're talking about this, because we want to be equipped. And the best way to do that is to know the truth about who God is. And, and he is a good father who hides us and he does protect us and he does avenge us. So we want to praise him for that. Okay, finishing up this psalm, we are in verse 13. It says, help me, arise God and confront them. Now he's like saying, all right, Lord, do what you can do. Do your thing. I know you can do it. Challenge them with your might. Free me from their clutches and rescue me from their rage. Throw them down to the ground, those who live for only this life on earth. Thrust them out of their prosperity and into their portion in eternity, leaving their wealth and wickedness behind. As for me, because I'm innocent, I will see your face until I see you for who you really are. I'll be satisfied in an awakening of your likeness in me. So David is really just basking in the fact that the Lord is going to avenge him of his enemies. He's gonna throw them to the ground Anybody who's living in the world who's coming against him, his enemies, basically he's saying they have no power against me. Even though they have wealth, they're wicked, and they're not going to be able to stand a chance against God the protector. Okay, I'm going to go back to the King James one more time for the last part. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down, deliver my life from the wicked with your sword. So he's even saying the Lord has a sword that he's going to use. With your hand from, deliver my life from the wicked with your sword, with your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life, and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure, they are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possession for their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. So David is bringing kind of like a resolution to this psalm, this description. He's, he's talking about how God is his hiding place. Yes, God's going to avenge him of his enemies, and he will be satisfied ultimately because God's in control and God's fighter for him because he is, he starts out saying in the psalm, he starts out by saying, I am following your ways, Lord. I'm walking down the path of righteousness. You know, I'm doing what you've asked me to do. So in summary, that's what we can do. We can make choices every day to walk in step with the Lord, to read the Bible, to follow his word, to meet with other believers, hold each other accountable, repent when we need to every day, be, become right with the Lord again, and allow his strength to build us up, allow him to protect us, allow him to fight for us when needed, sit with him, ask him what he wants us to do. There are times when he wants us to fight the battle and then there's times where he says, nope, just rest. You've done all you can do. You're walking in step with me. I'm gonna fight this battle right now. So it's important to discern that in different seasons and it may be like a day-to-day -day kind of a thing. So don't try to fight all your battles yourself. Let the Lord fight for you when needed and recognize the difference. So anyway, I just, Wanted to encourage you, if you like the content that I've been talking about, you may want to subscribe, hit the like button, 
share with other people, check out my other videos. Um, I do have some silly dog videos that I, <laughs> I like to do as well. So maybe some things you find kind of interesting and entertaining. Um, but as always, be blessed. And um, I just pray Psalm 91 over you, that prayer of protection. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Shalom.